Well, first of all, thank you very much. I'm really honored and happy to be here. And what I would like to do is to share the experience of a European working for Americans for a long part of my life and the last six years working for Google and what I see being the soft part of what we are discussing, the principles that companies like Google and the people in the Silicon Valley apply when they innovate and how the thinking influences it. So I had a yesterday meeting with, with, with our founder, Larry. He was in Paris. And uh, when I talk to him, I always remind when those guys started, they started with really an aspiration to serve the world. Their point was the internet is complex, you can't find things, let's sort out this issue. And then they continue to think in a way to sort out issues that matter for, for people. And they are very concentrated on, on, on the people, on, 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 on the outside, not on their organization, not on themselves. Uh, we, we just heard uh, the Director General uh, speaking, and I think that's an important element of the concentration, not on yourself, but on the others. They sort of, uh, I know it can sound cheesy, but it's really a genuine interest in the user, the end user. Um, in Europe, for example, we, we are spending a lot of time now, uh, uh, and I'm very proud of, of being uh, behind that, to preserve and promote world's culture. And I think it's, it's extremely important that we have platforms that bring on the web our web culture, our thinking, our values, uh, because the risk otherwise is that uh, we will only have Anglo-American content and Anglo-American way of seeing things and, and that our values, our way of thinking is not on the web. So we are doing a lot of work in that direction, but I don't want to make an advertisement for Google, so let me go to the principles. Um, the first one is, and when I really think to it, when I, when I, um, when I think about uh, um, Google itself, it is go back to the roots. In Europe, we have a tendency uh, to uh, look at our past and well, the way we've done things. And when we look at the problem, it's difficult for us to say, can I forget everything and redesign completely? Okay. Companies like Google, when they looked at search and when they looked at the driverless cars and when they looked at other things, they really tried to say, okay, forget how we do it today. Let's imagine how it could be done and what would be the benefit of it. So the driverless car, for example, is there are about a certain number of meters between cars when they drive. Can we, can we reduce that and can we change that? And going back to the root is an important principle. You were speaking about education. We should tell to our children, I think, that when they think to a problem, they should have a completely <laughs> open mind and go back to the roots and use these first principles. It is beautiful somehow because it allows to uh, innovate more freely. The second one is to keep it simple. If you think about it, just again to take the example of the company I work for, but uh, the, anybody can use this and ask any question and find the information. Uh, it's made so that for the user it is very simple. Uh, how many companies have a tendency to say I'm building something based on how it's simple for me rather than for my user? And this simplicity is a big element. And uh, you know, we talked about before multiculturality and uh, um, multi-sectors uh, way of, of dealing with education. Well, this simplicity is that it has to be perceived by anyone as being easy to use. Um, and the third one is innovation comes from anywhere. Um, principles, and if you look at now at those big American companies, uh, in most cases, like in ours, they have executives coming from all over the world. Uh, and they have quotas that maybe we don't respect, but between men and women. And, uh, and they have engineering centers everywhere. Those are the engineering centers of Google in Europe. I mean, I think there are many countries where there are engineering centers. We don't talk enough about this. But the fact that engineers and people come from, the, from the, all of the world is very important because it gives this ability to understand the simplicity of the user before and the world in a certain way. You know, there's also a rule. Uh, that many technology companies have, but in our company the rule is 50-50. You have to have 50% of people that are engineers and don't think to money. They think to the future, to products, to consumers, and maximum 50% of people like me who will take care of the environment and selling things and creating partnerships. But this balance between the end user and the rest, this 50-50, is what allows to think to short term and to medium long term. And this balance creates this innovation. How many companies in Europe today 
uh, have a difficulty with, 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 with keeping enough time on, on, on the long term. And, 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 and so you know, the benefit that, that those cultures sometimes have of being able to think to the both is, is, is a big competitive advantage. I talked about it already, so I don't want to spend time on this, but clearly, clearly, um, focusing on the user is extremely important. Until now, when you use a search engine, you always used it asking a question, no? Now you've got this Google Now system. You are on the search engine. It knows who you are because you log in to the system. And when it knows who you are, it will push information to you. Hey, Carlo, you are speaking in Brussels. That's great. Your train is at this hour. There is traffic. You have to leave 10 minutes before. Or, hey, Carlo, you ordered something on Amazon. It's arriving tomorrow at 6. Is there someone home to pick it up? And, and you can invent services like this and create things by linking technologies, which brings me to the next principle, actually, which is it's extremely important, and I think uh, for, those, for those companies it has been one of the basic principles to work on open technologies. Make sure that, you know, if you look at Android, Android is basically somehow a free system that, that Google has developed for the, for the telcos and to be present in, on the mobile phones as well, but it's a free system that's based on open source. A competitor, competitor like Amazon took it and made his own system on it without relating to us at all. Um, telco operators use it to create their own services. Uh, uh, companies like Samsung and others create the phones, but it's based on a technology that's open source that anybody can work on. Then there are service levels, but it's open technology. I would remember that the Internet is what it is because all machines can talk together. It's the first time, maybe after English, where we decided to have a common language between machines. And this common language and then connecting the machines makes sense because they speak a common language. Initially it was only on PCs, now with PCs plus phones, PCs plus phones plus glasses plus watches plus other things and all this communication allows this, this innovation to arrive. Two other principles before I end. Uh, one is, this is, can be controversial, but it's, I love to see this. I've seen this at Google, I've seen this at many companies in the US. This ability to say, instead of trying to improve by 10%, instead of trying just to improve what I do by 10% by cost cutting or by increasing the revenue, I rethink it and I try to think at 10 times. You can't get things like a driverless car if you don't have this kind of mentality. Because you say, I increment the way it is. You know? If Gutenberg, when he invented the press, has said, I want to find people that can write 10 times faster, we would never have the printing. You have to rethink it completely, right? And, and this mentality is something that is refreshing to see, and so that's why it was interesting to, to discuss it. Last two elements very quickly. Um, if you think about many things in Europe, sometimes we need to go for perfection. You know, Chanel that comes out with something, fashion, has to be a perfect object. But in technology, those companies, and it's true also for Apple, for ourselves, for everybody, they don't think I'm going out as a product that's perfect. I'm going out as a product, I put it to the end of the consumer, and then I tweak it, I improve it. I don't go for instant perfection. I go for continuous innovation. I'll change. I'll react to the user. I don't try to forecast the future like, do I know what happens in five years? I don't know. But I come out with something, and then according to how the people react, I'll transform it and move it. Um, the last but not least of the principles is, uh, there is a principle at Google, but it's also true in other companies, that says 80, 70, 20, sorry, 70, 20, 10. 70% of the time is on your core business, 20% of the time is on things that matter but are collateral, 10% is completely outside. And there is, a there is even a principle that says each of the people in the company has 20% of his time to think to whatever he wants. My 20% is the Culture Institute. I work on this cultural aspect because I love it. Some engineers have developed products like Google Earth, like uh, this other product and uh, Street View and other things, completely starting in the 20% time. Then they say, hey guys, but this is becoming interesting, it's valuable, so we made a product of it. Somehow I have structures that are flexible to allow this. So just to end, accepting failures is typical in the American culture, and I say I insist on that. We always talk about creating ecosystems for, for, in, for innovation, and, and Mr. President, we say that because we say yes, if we create startups, if we put money, if we create investment funds, all that is great. But if we don't have a culture of failure and accept failure and say a person that's failed in a startup or failed in a company should be recruited even more because he will not make the same mistake and he has grown, the ecosystem for innovation will not be there. And if we don't create a system in which we say, give to the people 
this, this, this freedom of thinking and, you know, try to apply some of the principles I've described now, I think it would be difficult for Europe, very honestly, to be competitive with Asia and the U.S., who has this free way, of, unconstrained way of looking at things, gives them a huge competitive advantage versus us that give ourselves constraints in thinking that are extremely difficult. That's what basically I wanted to say. I, I could end by saying that, no, the web is bringing a lot of value in Europe, and uh, uh, there are a lot of initiatives that, that, that my company is doing to try to create the ecosystem, like uh, helping small and medium companies, providing know-how trainings, working with universities, working with campuses, created campuses all over Europe. Uh, yes, Google Ventures and ventures like uh, investing in small ventures, um, participating with universities. But my experience, and I've seen this in Romania, where I had the launch of courses with universities in Spain, in Italy, in France, in many other places, is very honestly, we need to teach the people how to live in the current world when they are young by really talking to them about unconstrained mentality, certain level of openness, uh, rather than notions. Give them the ability to think by, by giving them the freedom ability to think. I think this is a very important element. And yes, courses, yes, as technology will do it, but it's a question of mentality. And when I think to Europe as a European, I worry because, because sometimes I think that we are giving